Me too. A simple phrase. Two words that have taken on a whole new meaning since first being used by civil rights activist Tarana Burke 13 years ago as a campaign to raise awareness for sexual assault and harassment. In 2017, actress Alyssa Milano used the phrase in a tweet stating, if all the women who have been sexually assaulted or harassed wrote Me Too as a status, we might give people a sense of the magnitude of the problem. At this point in time, allegations against Harvey Weinstein were beginning to emerge and the hashtag Me Too went viral. People used it as a way of showing solidarity with victims of assault, as well as a way of sharing their own experiences. It highlighted the things women have to deal with on a daily basis that are often overlooked by society, therefore opening a dialogue about these issues. Tell him what it's like to be a woman. Tell him that we have to be on guard, literally ready to protect our lives every time we walk down the street at night, walk through a park, get into a cab, take a train, go out drinking, walk to our car, go on a date, be in a lift with a stranger, or be in any basement ever. Allowing women a platform to talk about these issues meant people were made aware of how frequently they occurred as well as how many women experienced them. For a long time, we've been made to believe these issues are just part of life and things we've been taught to accept. It's 2018 and I've realized that nobody is safe long as she is alive. And every friend that I know has a story like mine. And the world tells me we should take it as a compliment. While many people have become complicit to these issues, others have been active in making themselves aware of the movement and the effect it's having on the current social and political climate. The Me Too movement is kind of a revolution for our generation. I think it is so important that women are standing up for themselves, saying that we aren't going to take this anymore, and kind of making society more aware of the things that we need to be standing up against. It provides a voice to silenced women everywhere in the world. It's spread through many languages and many cultures to fight against sexual harassment and assault. Despite the empowering core message of the movement, there has been a mixed response from the media, with many choosing to focus on the negatives. There's been a lot of response. Um, not all of it's been positive, with loads of fake allegations, but they seem to get more of a focus in the media than the real ones. As it's deemed a controversial topic, there are many misconceptions based off people's own prejudices, creating a negative view of it. A common reaction is to accuse women of jumping on the bandwagon. People throw the phrase around, not realising that they're making it harder for women to come forward and be heard. As the movement gained more recognition, more and more brands and celebrities began to use their platform to help spread awareness. Popular shaving brand Gillette offered a new take on their slogan, releasing a short film encouraging men to hold each other accountable and challenging them to be the best they can be. We can't hide from it. It's been going on far too long. We can't laugh it off. Who's the daddy? What I actually think she's trying to say. Despite the advert taking a stand against bullying and harassment instead of just ignoring it, it still received plenty of criticism. Pierce Morgan was one person in particular who had a problem with it, claiming it was pathetic and virtue signaling, essentially saying Gillette were using the movement for their own profit. Other critics called for a boycott of the brand, describing the advert as man-hating. The negative response to the advert appeared to come primarily from men, with many questioning why there isn't more of a conversation surrounding male sexual assault. Recent government figures show 140,000 men between the ages of 16 and 59 were sexually assaulted from 2017 to 2018. However, there seems to be a double standard when it comes to this topic. People will ask, what about the men? When men come forward with their experiences, they are mocked and ridiculed. For example, Terry Crews was sexually assaulted, but when he shared his story, people questioned why he didn't fight back, why he didn't speak up sooner, why he enabled it. Very soon, the toxic culture of victim blaming was highlighted. Just as an example, uh, because a lot of people don't believe that a person like me could actually be victimized. And what happened to me has happened to many, many other men. Toxic masculinity seems to be a factor that comes into play, with many people feeling like appearing vulnerable and weak is something to be ashamed of. Actor and director Justin Baldoni presented the idea of redefining typical masculine traits and being open to change. And will you be man enough to stand up to other men when you hear locker room talk, when you hear stories of sexual harassment, when you hear your boys talking about grabbing ass or getting her drunk, will you actually stand up and do something so that one day we don't have to live in a world where a woman has to risk everything and come forward to say the words, me too? I think men need to start holding each other accountable. They need to start stepping in and doing something when they see someone doing something that's not right. I think men should be more active in raising awareness against assault because assault can happen to anyone regardless of gender, age, race, ethnicity. Ultimately it just comes down to power and who has power over who. The response given to sexual assault cases and the treatment of those involved is often unjust, with many victims ending up being the ones who are punished. 
Sintoya Brown is a victim of child sex trafficking who killed the man who bought her when she was 16 years old. At the time, she was sentenced to life in prison. I think the justice system can be quite biased towards the privileged. So people who look a certain way, act a certain way, might get lesser sentences to people on the opposite end of the spectrum. I think people need to start looking at the facts in front of them. There are a lot of things that we don't consider when we think about cases like this, you know, factors that we don't know about, like money, bribery, status. The justice system tends to favour men, meaning they frequently get away with lighter sentences. Brock Turner raped an unconscious woman outside a fraternity party, but was only given six months in prison with three years probation. Three months into the sentence, he was released early. Jacob Walter Anderson was indicted on four counts of sexual assault, but spent no time in prison and received a $400 fine for his actions. He also did not have to register as a sex offender. These cases all show that power and status are vital tools when it comes to evading justice. Donald Trump, currently one of the most powerful men in the world, nominated Brett Kavanaugh for the Supreme Court. This is a man who has had multiple allegations of assault made against him with few repercussions, a prime example of the use of power to silence victims. In times such as these, the Me Too movement is more crucial than ever. It can be difficult to imagine a time where things are much different, but it's important to remember the progress that's been made so far. I think it has been very successful in offering women a platform to tell their stories and you know, express their emotions in a way that they feel comfortable. And like, the more that people will do this, the more it will encourage others to speak up against their experiences which I think will obviously benefit in the future. The more people who talk about it, the more it gets done. I think it's incredible, really, that we get to be taking part in such a huge moment in history. The movement leaves us all with the choice to be complicit and ignore what is happening right in front of us, or to stand in solidarity with those who say me too. 